What's poppin' attack squad? It's your boy Sad Attack. Yeah, that's it, Tyler, bro. Your boy is dumb right now, bro. I took too many sh I took like five too many shots, bro. But we gotta check out passengers suck out of a plane. We just got done right reactor. He should never have left his cabin. So I'm gonna check this out one. This one sounds crazy. Passengers sucked out of a plane window? What the fuck? I, the fact that I'm watching Manifest on Netflix. <laughs> If you know, you know, bro. That shit sound crazy. Hey, imagine going on a flight and coming back five years later. That's pretty much what manifests. The story was all over the news a couple of years ago, but there was a mind-blowing detail about the story that very few news outlets chose to report. And so today's story will end with that detail. But before we get into today's story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you come to the right I place like because guy. that's all we do, and we upload two or three times every week. So if that's of interest like to you, guy. please ask the like button to hold your very easily startled cat, and then once they do, press the test button on your smoke detector. Also, the original bit is down below. All notifications so, go on so you don't miss any of our like weekly uploads. All right, let's get into I like today's story. I reacted three. This is my third video react. Uh, I like this type of videos. Keep it up, Mr. Ballin. Okay, this is a 19 minute video. On April 17th, 2018, 42 year old Holly Mackey sat down in aisle seat 14C on a Southwest Airlines plane. Damn. That morning, she, along with 143 other passengers and the five crew she members, would be flying from New York City aisle. to Dallas, Texas. And then after that four hour flight, Holly would get off that plane and board another okay, plane okay, from okay, Dallas okay, okay, to okay. Oklahoma City, where she lived. But luckily, that flight was only about an hour long. After Holly buckled her lap belt, she put her carry on bag under the seat in front of her, and then she waited to see who was going to be sitting in the two seats to her left. A few seconds later, a 43-year-old bank executive and mother of two named Jennifer Reardon came walking down the aisle and stopped right outside of row 14 and turned into the aisle towards Holly. And Holly, who was kind of keeping her head down, she noticed there was this person standing outside of her aisle, and so she turned and looked up, and looking down at her was this big, bright smile, and Jennifer said to her, hey, you know, can I sit next to you? Is anybody using those seats? And Holly would say, nope, I'm here by myself go right ahead. Unlike other airlines that would assign seats to all of their passengers before they boarded, Southwest Airlines has an open seating plan. What, what they do is they basically group passengers. I've only been on a plane like three times, four times. The first two was, not first two, three times. It was when I was like 10 years old. We were going to India. If you know, you know, like an 18 to 24 hour, like something like the 24 hour, like, plane ride so you had to board like two different planes is what we did I was like I was about like eight years old when we did that one so I don't remember but the last time we went to LA so I was like two hours drive so yeah, we already had, like, it was, okay. Into boarding right. groups, I've only been but then once that twice. group is on the plane, it's first come, first uh, serve. Being After Jennifer old. slid past Holly and made her way to the window seat where she sat down, which was seat 14A, she buckled her lap belt, and then just like Holly, she took her carry-on bag and stuffed it under the seat in front of her, and then she pulled a paperback book out of her bag and started reading it. For the next few minutes, as more and more passengers came onto the plane, nobody took the seat between Holly and Jennifer, because Generally speaking, people yeah. don't like riding in the middle seat. <laughs> yeah, but that's so awkward. Imagine just sitting, imagine these two just, imagine just these two sitting right here and you sitting in the middle, bro. Like, come on, man. You can find some other seat. But of course, when there's nothing, there's none left, you have to sit in the middle because that's it. There's a lot of middle seats open if not. But like, come there on. There is a window or aisle seat available because it's just not very comfortable. But it's kind of awkward too, bro. It's like, pick one, bro. Like... Y'all just making like that's such an awkward situation if you have to send the middle ones like Motherfuckers sitting on the right and motherfuckers on the left. But eventually, the only seats left were middle yeah. seats. And at some point, this preteen girl who had her head buried in her phone, she comes onto the plane and she works her way down and she stops outside of row 14 and she very politely asks Holly if she can sit between her and okay. Jennifer. Yeah. And Holly says, absolutely. And so this girl slips past Holly and she sits down in seat 14B. She puts her lap belt on, she takes her carry-on, puts it in yeah, the front of her, have to have and then she just goes middle. back to looking at her phone. Now that 
all of Holly's seatmates had arrived and she would not need to be getting out of the way for more people to come into a row, Holly kind of relaxed for a minute and she pulled out her iPad and she began scanning through the news as she waited for the plane to finish boarding. Okay. After all the passengers had been seated, one of the flight attendants closed the airplane door and then they grabbed the microphone and welcomed everyone aboard the plane and thanked them for choosing Southwest Airlines. And then they reminded everyone on board to make sure their seatbelt was fastened, that their tray was in the okay. upright position, that their seat was upright as well, that they had stowed big electronics. And then with the help of several other flight attendants, they went over some basic safety procedures in case of a mid-air emergency. Most okay. of the passengers on this flight were really not paying attention to the safety brief. They yeah. were I, I've been on that plane one time, like like I said, I was like eight years old. That one don't count. Like like two years ago, like for New Year's, we went to LA, but no one paid attention to that shit, bro. I pay a little bit of attention because it's my first time being on it, so I pay a little attention. But looking around, no one gives a shit, bro. Cause when that shit, when that shit goes left, everybody in the mama's gonna be screaming, bro. It's gonna be a hey, survival, bro. Hey. No one gonna be listening. Sleep, they were stowing their stuff. But I get they were, that to say. They were really not paying attention to the safety brief. They were trying to sleep, or they were stowing their stuff, or they were sending one last text message. But Holly, on the other hand, she was paying careful attention. Now, this wasn't totally unusual for her. She was generally safety conscious. But for some reason on this flight, she just had a sense that something bad was about to happen. Fine. There was this deep sense of foreboding that she normally didn't feel on flights. And so she found herself really carefully paying attention okay. to these procedures in case something did go wrong. After the brief was over, the attendant who was holding the microphone thanked everyone for listening and then said, sit back, relax, and enjoy your flight. Yeah. But yeah. Holly couldn't do that because one, she really did have this weird sense that something was off about this what flight, that something bad was going to happen, and she just didn't know why. What? That's so crazy, what? I was just having a feeling that this shit, oh, we about to, something about to go crazy, man. I've never had that feeling. Knock on wood. I never get that and anymore. then number two, she remembered that she had drank this huge cup of iced coffee before she boarded so the plane. She's awake. So now she really had to use the bathroom. Okay. But the plane had already yeah, been I need taxiing to take a shit over too to the runway. And coffee. an attendant had told her she had to sit down. You can't go to the bathroom now. You gotta wait until we're up in the air. And so Holly, who was now feeling very mentally and physically uncomfortable, found herself kind of anxiously looking to her left out the window as the plane continued to taxi to the top of the runway. And then once the plane was set it paused for a second and then the engines fired and holly and the girl next to her and jennifer all got sucked back into their seat as the plane began hurtling down the track and so okay. holly the girl and jennifer they're all turned they're looking out the window as the plane is just bombing straight ahead they're watching the airport kind of passengers sucked the plane well, i'm just trying to imagine that here on the view and then they feel the plane well, begin to get lift, crazy. and then they take off as the plane rapidly ascended, Holly turned away from the window and just sat back and closed her eyes and was just picturing that moment when they reached their cruising altitude and she would hear that chime in the cabin and then the captain would come on the intercom and say, we've reached our cruising altitude. It's now safe to get up and walk around, at which point Holly was going to run to the bathroom. And so when the plane finally got to a point where Holly felt like they were starting to level out, they probably were going to be at their cruising altitude soon, Holly preemptively undid her seatbelt and turned to face the aisle getting ready I still for that. don't understand how the fuck okay okay I'm in the cabin so she could get to the bathroom as soon okay, as possible okay, but okay, that okay. chime didn't happen instead when they reached their cruising altitude the captain came on the intercom and she would tell everyone that they had reached their cruising altitude but no one can leave their seats yet they were expecting some fairly rough air some turbulence and so Holly was totally frustrated and disappointed and she let out this audible grunt out of frustration <sighs> and Jennifer who had her head in her book she hears this grunt and she turns to look at holly to make sure she's okay and at the exact same time holly found herself kind of looking down and turning towards the window to look out the window and she made eye contact with jennifer and immediately holly recognized that jennifer thought something was wrong with her and she was kind of looking at her to make sure she was okay and holly just goes i really have to go to the bathroom and so at this the two women kind of laughed about holly's plight because it was kind of funny that she desperately needed to go but wasn't allowed to and so eventually Jennifer just said, you know, I'm sure they'll let you go soon. And then Jennifer went back to her book and Holly went back to anxiously waiting to use the bathroom and the girl sitting between them 
did not care at all. She was not listening to them. She didn't care. She had her head buried in her phone. After several minutes, Holly started to worry that it might be a while before she was allowed to get up and move around because she's looking at the flight attendants and they're all buckled into their jump seats and they were hitting some turbulence. And so Holly's thinking, okay, I got to do something to take Fuck my it. mind off of she this does, discomfort. She, she, oh, okay. Not only the physical discomfort of needing to use the bathroom, but also that strange foreboding. It just was not going away. And she didn't know what it was, but she just had the sense that something bad was going to happen. And so Holly decided she would do some work. And so at 11.04 a.m. Eastern, okay. she reached down below the seat in front of her and began fishing around in her bag for her laptop. Before okay. she could grab it, she heard two deafeningly loud sounds in rapid succession. The first was a popping sound that came from outside of the plane near the left wing and the left wing was right outside of their window. Oh. And then she heard this whooshing sound that went through the entire cabin. It was like a high-powered vacuum. And then the entire cabin became freezing cold as the plane banked hard to the left. After all this happened, in this fraction of a second, Holly sat up and it was like she was immediately in shock. She's looking out across the other seats and she sees all those oxygen masks have deployed from the ceiling. People are screaming, the attendants are running up and down the aisle trying to help people put their masks on as the plane is hard banking to the left. And Holly just kind of robotically reaches out and grabs the mask right in front of her and she tries to put it on but despite having listened intently to the safety brief it was like her hands didn't work and she couldn't get the band to extend long enough to put it over her head and so she's fumbling with this mask still in shock she can't believe this is actually happening this is how she's gonna die and then it's like she snaps out of it and she forgets about the mask and she turns left to make sure the girl and Jennifer were okay and what she saw was absolutely horrifying. That popping sound she heard outside of the plane was the sound of the engine underneath the left wing exploding. And when it detonated, the cowling, which is the outside of the engine, kind of protects the engine, it broke apart. And one of the pieces of this cowling flew and hit the side of the aircraft. And it okay. struck the window of okay. row 14, and Holly's open. row. And when it did that, it shattered the window completely, causing an explosive decompression of the cabin. When even a small hole opens up in a plane yeah. flying miles above the earth, yeah. that hole will create hurricane-like forces inside of the cabin. Yeah. And so anything that is not completely anchored down, including people, will get sucked out of that hole. Oh and in this case, that's what happened. When that window broke open, Jennifer, who was sitting closest to it, was immediately sucked through the window. Now, she was not completely ejected because her seatbelt kept her from going completely yeah. out the window, but her entire upper half was now wedged outside of the plane. As for oh, the girl okay. sitting next to Jennifer, in between Jennifer and Holly, she was still getting pulled towards the window because Jennifer, even though she had been pulled out, there was still segments of the window that were open. And so there was still suction towards the window. Oh and so my God, bro. Bro, much just... I, I what what where, where were they going, bro? Imagine just going somewhere, probably for a vacation, wherever they're going, bro. Everyone has a different story of where they were going. Imagine just reading a book, like the girl in the middle, or on girl on the left was doing, and a person in the middle was just on her phone. Out of nowhere, that shit is open, bro. Like what? Like of course they had like a little sound and shit, some popping and shit. But like, bro, one second you're good, like one minute you're good, and next minute you're hanging out of a fucking airplane window. That is nuts to me, bro. Oh, yeah, that is, that's how you know life is so crazy, bro. Life is Wrapped so this girl and crazy. pulled her in tight to her chest, and then with a... So Holly instinctively reached over and grabbed this girl and pulled her in tight to her chest. And then with her left arm, she reached behind the girl and grabbed the belt of Jennifer. And she tried to pull Jennifer back into the plane, but she could tell there was no way she could pull her back. The forces pulling Jennifer out of the plane were far too strong. Holly remembers thinking, someone is gonna know this is happening. There's gotta be a sensor or something. The flight crew has got to be aware that a person is getting yeah. pulled out of the plane. Trust me, they they definitely know some exploded or type shit 
Like some crazy is going on back then. In reality, know. the captain and the flight crew, they were aware that the left engine had blown up. That was the thing they were actively oh. trying to combat to try to keep the plane from crashing. But they had no idea about the drama that was unfolding oh, in row 14. Okay, and so okay, Holly okay, is holding bad. on to Jennifer. She's holding on to this girl and she's screaming out for anybody in the plane to please take notice of the fact that Jennifer is stuck out of the plane. But the sound that was being created by this open window was it. deafening. Nobody could hear anybody else in this plane. <laughs> Not to mention, the plane is banking hard to the left and everybody on board believes they're about to die. So no one is looking around, taking stock of what's going on and assessing Imagine what to being next. fucking Everybody's Jennifer, in... bro. Imagine being Jennifer, bro. Imagine you just hanging out of a fucking plane window. I know I'm pausing a lot. Just trust me. Imagine just hanging out of a fucking plane window, bro. That is going crazy, bro. Mode ...and is basically just focused on themselves. And so despite Holly yelling out and trying to wave to people, it was worthless. Jennifer was just stuck out the window and no help was coming. And so for several minutes, Holly is just holding on to Jennifer. She's holding on to this girl. She's screaming out for help, but no one's hearing her. And then eventually, as the plane began to come back from its bank, and it seemed like the pilot was taking control of the craft even though it was deafening inside and it was still terrifying people began to open up their blinders a little bit and they started to look around and some people sitting in the vicinity of row 14 they noticed what was going on with jennifer and they began yelling and waving for the flight attendants but again the sound from this window was deafening there was just no way the attendants could hear them and even though everyone's waving at the attendants the attendants are very preoccupied they're dealing with the people right in front of them who are all very worried and concerned. Bro, bro, to bro, 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 they're worried about people around them, bro. There's people out. People back there, bro, that you gotta worry about, bro. Come on, man. They're dealing with the people. Hopefully, hopefully passengers sucked out of a plane when they hope. I'm sorry, Jennifer, bro. Come right on, in please. Front of them, who are all very hopefully, this, and concerned. hopefully this story takes a turn in a positive way. At this point, bro, I'm sorry, Jennifer. They don't hear your ass. They don't hear people around you. Eventually, that 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 seatbelt gonna break or something. Talk to the captain about what they need to do next, and so they did not see there was this emergency happening. And so for several more minutes, Jennifer is just stuck out the window with nobody helping her. And it was during this time, as Holly is holding on to her waist and she's holding on to the girl, that Holly is thinking, you know, Jennifer, she's been stuck outside the plane where there's no oxygen for almost ten minutes. <laughs> nobody can survive that, and Jennifer has been forced through this window that's not big enough to have a person fit through it and so holly found herself moving her left hand that was gripping on to jennifer's waist she just let go of it not because she was trying to let go of jennifer frankly her hand was not keeping jennifer no. from going anywhere it was just kind of habitual that she was holding on to her waist so she takes her hand off of her waist and she just places it right in the center of jennifer's back like she was comforting jennifer she was showing jennifer that no. you're not alone we can't help you but you're not alone and the woman in row 15, an older woman, she saw Holly do this and she reached across and she put her hand on Holly's back. It was like everybody knew this is a total crisis, but there's just nothing we can do, even if it's killing Jennifer. Despite the damage to the left engine from it exploding, the captain, Tammy Jo Schultz, who was a longtime veteran of the airline, she was able to combat this hard bank to the left and she regained control of the plane, at which point, through the intercom, she was able to bark out orders that were loud enough for the flight attendants to actually hear what was going on, and they were instructed to get up and walk down the aisles and make sure the passengers are okay. And this is when the crew spotted Jennifer. They acted quickly and rushed over and they grabbed Holly and the girl next to her and they safely got them out of that row and moved okay. them to a different row. And then okay. once they were gone, two men named Andrew and Tim, they volunteered to go in row 14 and pull Jennifer back into the plane. They knew the risks. They pull her in, there is still an opening in this plane and they could very easily just get sucked out themselves. But they didn't care. They knew they needed help. W. W. I gotta see a picture. W. 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 Andrew and Tim. We're gonna see how the story ends. Though. Risks. 
They pull w, her in. W, there w, is w. still an opening in this plane, and they could very easily just get sucked w, up themselves. W, w. But they didn't care. They knew they needed to help this woman. And so without w. any hesitation, the two men walked into row 14. They got in position, and with all their might, they were able to pull Jennifer in. W. They got her into the aisle, and then the two men were able to leave row 14 without w. being sucked w. up. W. So Jennifer is laying in the aisle, and a passenger who happened to be a nurse who was named Peggy, she rushed over and she began performing CPR. At this point, Holly remembers looking around the cabin and seeing that everybody was just perfectly still. It was still deafeningly loud inside of the cabin because this window is still sucking air out. So it's very, very loud, but she's looking out and there was just this aura of calm inside the plane. No one was running around, no one was panicking. Everyone was just kind of sitting, watching as Peggy was trying to save Jennifer's life. At 11.21 a.m., so 17 minutes after that pop was heard outside of the plane, the captain of this plane is able to successfully perform an emergency landing nice. at an airport in Philadelphia. Nice. As soon as they touched down on the runway, the captain had already coordinated with a medical team who was standing by, and they rushed on, they grabbed Jennifer, they rushed her out and got her to the hospital, but unfortunately, she didn't make it. She died from blunt force trauma from having been forced out of that window. Oh, Jennifer. Ah, that's so whack, bro. That is so lame, man. She didn't make it. She died from blunt force trauma from having been forced out of that window. It was just too small and it happened too suddenly and it killed her. Holly was obviously very shaken up by this experience, just like the rest of the passengers who were on board. Oh, but there's a bro. detail in Holly's story that makes her experience even more traumatic. On the morning she got on this plane, she arrived at the airport fairly early, she had a big coffee with her, and she got in line for security. So as she's going through this line, she's drinking this huge coffee, and then when it's her turn to actually go through the scanners, she finishes this coffee, she throws it away, she goes through security, and by the time she's on the other side, she's now late. And so she runs all the way to her gate, and when she boards, her boarding group has already gotten on. Mm -hmm. And so all the seats that she liked to take, those are already gone. She liked to sit towards the front of the plane because she liked to be one of the people that got off the plane first once they landed. Mm -hmm. And so she began looking for the first open row that she could sit in. And so she starts walking down the row and she finally gets to row 14. She's looking on her left and there's a totally open row, three open seats. And so like she always did on long flights, she took the window seat, seat 14A, because she could lean her head up against the side of the plane mm -hmm. and sleep. And so after she buckled herself in and put her luggage underneath the seat in front of her, she remembered she had just drank that huge cup of coffee while she was going through security and even though she didn't have to go to the bathroom right then she expected to probably have to go a couple of times once they took off and so not wanting going. to disrupt the two people that were inevitably going to take the two seats next to her by constantly all flight long getting up and sneaking past them to go to the bathroom over and over she again Holly she decides you know what I'll just move I will sit in the aisle seat it's not as good because I can't sleep but at least this way I can get up and use well, the bathroom. Imagine your life can save did the your life legit was saved by just drinking coffee and your mentality is saying I'm a I'm gonna need to use the bathroom. But you doing that someone else was killed, bro. Like that is something hard to just think about, bro. Imagine like bro, okay, I'm gonna take a pit or shit cause I drink coffee, so I'm gonna sit right here. But usually, if this, if I didn't drink that coffee, or whatever, I'll be sitting in the window seat. I have to figure. It. Oh my God, bro, Jennifer, I feel bo. Jennifer, bro, the person that passed away. The people I'm sitting here. And so she unbuckles herself. She reaches this down. She crazy. grabs her bag from underneath the chair in front of her. She stands up and she moves two seats over to the aisle seat of row 14. She sits down. She puts her seatbelt on. She puts her luggage under the seat in front of her there. Yeah. And then as she's kind of getting herself situated, she sees someone Jennifer. has stopped right outside of row 14. Jennifer. And so she turns and looking down at her is the smiling face of Jennifer Reardon. And she says, hi, you know, is anybody sitting next next to you can I sit next to you and Holly says absolutely and Jennifer sneaks past her uh, and sits in the uh, so that's gonna do it guys if you got something out of today's episode this is crazy but life in general is fucking nuts never swim in that trip. okay I don't know how to swim so I've never done that they had to make a special law because of what might have checked this out later some other time
Ghost of Flight 401? What the? That's 47. What the hell? I had to kill with the hell. I had to watch later. Save to watch later. Well, this dude's channel is a W, bro. Hey, Mr. Ballin, if you ever see the video, which I doubt, hey, you a W, bro. You a massive W. I love these videos. I don't love it because it's tragic and in real life, but I love the the way you speak about it because you entertain. But that shit was 25 minutes. It didn't seem like 25 minutes, but I'm out. Let's get real 2K. Okay.